The binary compensation plan is popular with network marketing companies because it does what no other compensation plan type can do, and that is it pays the upline on an unlimited numbers of levels of downline volume. Does that mean that your compensation plan should be a binary plan? Perhaps and perhaps not. In this video, I will explain the pros and cons of this type of compensation plan. Every compensation plan type has its strengths and weaknesses, just like people. For decades, the mainstay of the direct selling channel was the generation breakaway compensation plan with stair step compensation. And that plan is fading away like the horse and buggy did after automobiles were invented. Today, new direct selling companies use Unilevel, Unigen, and binary hybrid compensation plans. In this video, I'll share with you the good and the bad about the binary plan. To binary or not to binary? That is the question. So let's answer it. A binary compensation plan is structurally similar to a two-wide matrix. However, the compensation method for a binary plan is totally different. Unlike other compensation plans that pay bonuses using percentages of a single commission period's sales volumes, binary compensation plans pay threshold bonuses based on the accumulation of unpaid volumes on the left and right sides of a representative's two-leg organization. Binary compensation plans pay to unlimited depth. All other types of multi-level compensation plans pay compensation upon the volume of a limited number of levels or generations of downline representatives. For top leaders, this means that their downline organization will grow beyond the limits of their pay line when they are not paid through a binary compensation plan. Because in a binary compensation plan there are only two spots to fill on an independent representative's first level of the binary structure, there is spillover. Spillover is the placement of a representative not on one's first level but instead on the first level of a downline representative in your placement tree. A power leg is defined as a leg that contains significantly more volume than the other leg. A power leg occurs when one of two situations is present. Either your upline representatives are placing representatives into one of your legs, this is spillover, or the representatives in one of your legs are building their businesses much faster than the representatives in your other leg. When a representative has a power leg, he or she can focus on building just one leg of their placement tree, which means the compensation plan is easier for that representative with a power leg. Most binary compensation plans pay compensation weekly, which means people get paid more often than other plans, which may pay most often on a monthly basis. All other types of multi-level compensation plans pay compensation upon the volume generated in a commission period, most often monthly. When a new compensation period starts, the volume generated in the past is irrelevant. With all other types of plans, you get paid only upon the volume generated in each commission period. Binary compensation plans pay threshold bonuses based on the accumulation of unpaid volumes on the left and right sides of a representative's two-leg organization. Unpaid volume this week is the sum of unpaid volume carried forward from last period plus new volume generated this week. Volume is carried forward from the last commission period when a company pays in cycles or when an independent representative has unpaid volume, but only when the representative is active. When a representative isn't active, any volume carried forward from the previous commission period and any volume generated in this period is flushed, which means it is removed from the system so that representatives inactive this period won't be paid upon it when they are active in the future. This effect is a golden handcuff. When you are paid through a binary compensation plan, you can lose more than just this period's pay income when you are inactive some of your future income may be lost as well. In all other compensation plans, if you are inactive in one commission period, it simply means you are not eligible to earn compensation upon the volumes of other representatives in that period. The damage done to your future income is zero. 
The effect of your inactivity is limited to the period in which you were inactive. Because compensation is calculated upon an unlimited number of levels of downline volume, binary compensation plans pay top leaders the most compared to all other compensation plan types. If you wish to attract successful leaders to your company, having a binary compensation plan can be very helpful. Many of the people who have been successful in a company with a binary compensation plan who are seeking a new opportunity will like your company better if your compensation plan is a binary plan. In fact, some of these people won't join a new company without one. Unless you put into place a group of measures to slow down the payout, you will pay out too much. One of the income limiting elements in a binary compensation plan is a cap on the amount of binary bonuses that can be earned for each rank in your pay plan. While your compensation plan chart identifies these limits as maximum binary bonuses, many in the field interpret these amounts incorrectly as how much you can earn at each rank. Curiously, they don't see the amounts as limits, even though that's exactly what they are. Instead, they see them as income potential. So, while you publish these amounts as income limits, many in the field view them as good news, not bad. Isn't that interesting? The suffering of the lower and middle class, that is the bad side of binary compensation. While it pays the leaders the most, lower and middle ranked representatives are not paid as well. While first order bonuses and fast start bonuses can help to raise the incomes of new and young representatives, binary compensation plans have larger deserts, those without adequate sustenance, and hardy representatives must cross those deserts to arrive in the promised land of higher incomes. Like pioneers, many die on the trail. In a binary compensation plan, the volume in your weakest leg determines how you will be paid. This means to get paid, you will need to increase the volume in your weaker leg. The best ways to do that are to place your new personally enrolled representatives into your weaker leg and focus your efforts on helping the people in your weaker leg as well to build their businesses. It is counterintuitive to think of your downline organization as two teams and that you should focus your efforts mostly in helping your weaker team succeed because your representative is based mostly upon their productivity. Balancing leg volumes can be difficult to do. Healthy binary compensation plans include income limits per title to slow the payout down and to encourage the building of more stronger enrollment tree legs. However, in no other type of multi-level compensation plan is there a limit on how much you can earn per rank. This is a negative attribute. Chief financial officers want to have predictable expenses. When expenses are unpredictable, they get real crabby fast. The total percentage of field compensation paid in a binary compensation plan can vary significantly from one commission plan to another. In addition, binaries are famous for their creep, that slow but steady increase in the average percentage of compensation paid out in each commission run. It is very difficult to get the business rules of a binary compensation plan financially right the first time. If you'd like to know why, call me with your compensation plan in hand and we'll talk about it. While steps can be taken to slow the payout down, still it is common for direct selling companies with binary compensation plans to have the need to amend their plans later for three primary reasons. One, the payout exceeds the budget. Two, the plan is paying out too much to the wrong people and not enough to the right people. Three, recruiting and selling activities are below expectations. Do you need help with your binary compensation plan? Sylvina Consulting designs and improves all types of compensation plans, including binaries. We also professionally evaluate and improve compensation plans that are designed by others. It would be my pleasure to speak with you about your plan.
cool thing about a binary, to me, are the golden handcuffs. In a typical comp plan, traditional plan, if I'm not active this month, I don't get paid this month. What happens next month? I can be active next month and get paid. In a binary plan, because I'm paying you on unpaid volume, and because the rule says as soon as you're not active, I'm going to flush that unpaid volume. That volume that was rolled forward, that could be paid on in the future, will only stick around if you're active. So the consequence of not being active in a binary plan is more severe. It's golden handcuffs. If you don't want that volume to be flushed in your strong leg, you better stay active. The binary compensation plan is popular because it does what no other type of compensation plan does, and that is, it pays the upline on an unlimited number of levels of downline volume. How can you do that? Won't you pay out too much? Unless you put into place a group of measures to slow down this runaway train of a plan, you will pay out too much. A binary compensation plan is structurally similar to a two-wide matrix. However, the compensation method for a binary plan is totally different. Unlike other compensation plans that pay bonuses using percentages of a single commission period sales volumes, binary compensation plans pay threshold bonuses based on the accumulation of unpaid volumes on the left and right sides of a representative's organization. Compensation is paid to representatives when the volume of both legs meet or exceed specific thresholds, or when the volume of the lesser leg meets or exceeds a specific threshold. Active representatives with unpaid volumes have their left and right side volumes rolled forward to the next commission period. Inactive representatives lose the accumulated unpaid volumes. Binary compensation plans count on the presence of representatives who go inactive to limit payouts. The total percentage of field compensation paid in a binary compensation plan can vary significantly from one commission run to another. In addition, binaries are famous for their creep, the slow but steady increase in the average percentage of commissions paid out in each commission run. Earnings caps and flushings are employed to limit total payout, which is somewhat unpredictable. Here are the steps that you can take to slow down a runaway binary compensation plan. First, pay bonuses upon weaker leg volumes using cycles instead of as a percentage of weaker leg volumes. Next, limit weekly income by paid as title. Then, flush strong leg volumes in excess of a specific value and when representatives are inactive, don't accumulate new volumes for them. Flush carrier volumes of inactive representatives, cap total commission period payout as a percentage of commission period new volumes. The purpose of a commission period payout cap is to give a direct selling company the power to set a budget for compensation plan earnings as a percentage of a commission period's new volume. Interestingly, most independent representatives don't think of the payout cap in the same way that a company sees it. Representatives read it as, you will pay out this much, instead of, you won't pay out more than this much. It is never good news when a company chooses to enforce a payout cap, because when this happens, representatives experience an undeserved pay cut. In addition to implementing the steps above, it is important to model the payout of your binary compensation plan to calculate the maximum payout. On your journey to build a great direct selling company, you'll face numerous challenges. To survive and prosper in this industry, your company needs to have an edge. That is why in 2011, Kevin and I created the Direct Selling Edge Conference. We joined together to build a team of direct selling professionals. 
each a top expert in his or her subject area to provide you with action steps you can take to build and grow your direct selling, network marketing, or social selling company smarter and faster. We're proud of the faculty that we've assembled here at the conference. So let's take a moment and allow you to listen in on what you'll be learning when you attend the Direct Selling Edge Conference. What percentage of your sales are you going to budget for your total field compensation expense? This is your largest expense of your business. It's larger than all the other expenses added together. Now I realize that there's a lot of things that go into making a direct selling company profitable. There's a lot of things that go into making uh, a direct selling company successful. But for me, for the direct seller that's coming into the field, it's got to be so simple that a fourth grader could do it. Within the first 10 minutes, you know that you're at the right place because you're already learning. It's totally changed my views on how I should uh, compensate my sales staff or my ambassadors. Direct Selling Edge uh, Conference is just chock full of just tools and tips. Each presenter brings a, a history and knowledge base and practical experience in direct sales that, that's gonna provide input to the new concept people like myself or even those with an ongoing concern. I, I can see the value at different points of, of your business life cycle throughout and, and it has to do with the presenters and the wealth of knowledge that they actually collectively be able to provide to you. It was fantastic. A new distributor or something, somebody thinking about joining your company, one of the first things they do is connect to you on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or Pinterest even. They want to make sure that you have that kind of a presence. There's this mystical thought process in our business that says, if I can go recruit two or three or six good people, now I can go back to what I'm doing and they'll go build the field for me. Okay? It's not accurate. I had no idea of all of the different aspects of, of what it takes to really successfully run a company. So this conference has really taught me all of the different levels and compliance and the attorneys and social media and everything that I need um, for my party plan company to really succeed. One of the things that I thought was really great was that I'm glad I did it. It took me three chances to get here. I actually couldn't make the other two, but I got here and it was so well worth it. Communication. You know, it's not draconian where you're going to do what I say, but instead you communicate very skillfully with the field. It's in both of our best interests. You can't benefit from having good policies if you don't teach people what to do and what not to do. There has to be an education function. Everybody thinks compliance is all about catching bad guys and penalizing them. No. Actually, the majority of a, of a compliance person's function is an education. Your project plan is forever going to be a living document. If you're not going in there and updating it on a weekly basis, at a minimum weekly basis, you're not effectively using your project plan because then you're not keeping it in front of your mind and in front of your users' minds. So it's a great opportunity for anyone uh, because the small investment it is to participate in something like this could save you tons of money. I mean, I don't even know how many thousands of dollars, but it could save you a lot of money and a lot of effort. Now, first thing that an internal compliance department does is uphold the policies and procedures. Super important. If you have policies and procedures in place and you don't uphold them, it's not a good thing. Something as little as a picture in front of a house with money floating down, that's an income claim. A large check at your annual event that says you just uh, earn $10,000. That check is an income claim. Are you designing the plan? Or are you having an expert design the plan like Jay Leisner, or someone like that? Very, very important. Send your comp plan in before you sign an agreement with a software provider. You can go live with most good software providers by uh, having the system up and running without the compensation plan, unless you're a binary or coded bonuses because you don't pay until the following month. There's things that you don't know that you need to know. Come to this conference, they'll, uh, they'll get you on track, they'll help you get a sense of direction, get your bearings, and uh, navigate the path forward. For us, it's just been an incredible value. A person like me that came in 
at a minus eight <laughs> and leaving at a number 10, hey, can't tell you how much it was worth. Priceless.